Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Rockstar Flipper YouTube channel on a Monday afternoon. Um, I got a lot of messages, a lot of emails regarding um, purchasing of bulk material, and by that I mean uh, from websites like liquidation.com, bulk.com, B U L Q.com, um, and some opinions. You know, like Groupon sells bulk merchandise, Amazon warehouse deals sometimes there's a lot of places that you can get merchandise on pallets or by the um by you know the truckload or in more than a couple pieces at a time basically um so people want to know my opinion so let me give it to you i'm just gonna make a quick little video and my opinion may or may not be right or wrong this is not me saying yes or no this is just me telling you my experience and my opinion so disclaimer full transparency um i have purchased from bulk.com b-u-l-q i have purchased from liquidation.com and i have also purchased from several other um warehouse type liquidation sites um groupon being one as well now is there you know the biggest question is is it profitable the answer is yes it can be it doesn't guarantee it's going to be and let me kind of break this down and this is this is true for most of these sites but not for all of them a lot of the merchandise is cherry picked. A lot of this merchandise has been gone through. Um, most of this merchandise is returns, customer returns. Um, you know, some of it's open box, but it was, you know, returned by the customer after they opened it. It doesn't mean that it's broken. Some of it was defective. Some of it was returned by the customer because something was wrong or they took something out of it. There's all kinds of reasons why this merchandise would end up in a liquidation type uh, scenario. And if you go on like Home Depot or Walmart's liquidations, you can see that it says customer returns. And so we all know when you've taken something back uh, to a store for a return situation that it could be any number of reasons why you're taking it back. So when you're buying this stuff in you know pallets or bulk or whatever, remember that. Remember that there's no telling whether something was broke, whether it was just open and it's still good or whether it was you know just missing an item or maybe it was defective from the warehouse whatever the case is you're gonna have to go through and test all of this merchandise and you're gonna have to take the time to open that everything up make sure that it's all good you have to make sure it's all present and accounted for um so yeah it's gonna take a lot of time and that's kind of my problem with these bulk pallets um you know it's not gonna save you any time you're gonna be able to buy more merchandise at one time but you're still gonna spend the labor and the man hours to go through and check all this stuff. And if you're buying assorted stuff like houseware, electronics, and merchandise of that, you know, assorted type, you're gonna need chargers, you're gonna need batteries, you're gonna need to test power buttons, you're gonna need to test uh, functions. It could just turn into a lot of time and labor and really testing these items you know accurately and fully in order to resell them so you know depending on the type of merchandise that you're buying you can definitely get into a, a lot of work um if you go the route of buying like bulk clothing uh liquidations you eliminate all of that labor so i kind of lean towards those types of um you know closeouts or warehouse deals if you can back in the day i bought you know when um uh, Radio Shack went out of business. We bought a few pallets. I bought a few. Dave bought a lot of pallets of Radio Shack equipment and there was a lot of electronics. It took a long time to test it and we did make some money but the amount of labor that we were paying the, the, the helpers to do this ate up the profit. So be very careful when you're buying that type of material. Something to think about if you're if you're bidding or you're looking to bid on some pallets or whatever it might be. Um, just my two cents, my info that you can definitely make money on pallets. Um, you know, outside of the obvious, making sure that you're buying at a good price. Um, make sure that you know that a lot of the equipment may or may not be good, it may be bad, and that, you know, some percentage of it's probably not gonna be any good. So you need to price this stuff as is. Uh, you know, consider that you're buying it assuming that it doesn't work. You know, give it the worst case, worst price scenario, and then go from there, because you will get some that are good and you'll get some that are bad. Um, in my experience, it was 50-50. Half the stuff was bad, I sold it broken. Half the stuff was good, so that ate into profits. And then the labor to do it ate into profits. Just take all this stuff into consideration. Um, it's definitely a market that's intriguing. It's it's not impossible to make money on, but you just have to be super careful. Um, there are a ton of places to buy this merchandise from. Again, bulk, uh, liquidations.com. You can Google Walmart uh, closeouts. Uh, I've seen Marshalls and Home Goods. I've seen Victoria's Secret. I've seen you know Target. I've seen Home Depot. They all basically have a division. But all these sites have 
you know, online stores. That's my other problem. If these companies are already selling online or selling on eBay or Amazon, why would they sell it at a discount for you and I to be able to make money on? Why wouldn't they just handle it themselves? Well, it it's two part answer. Some of it is the processes and, and procedures they have in place just don't allow for that. And the other part of it is they don't want to spend the time or the labor to do it and they would be willing to just move the inventory get paid for it and then let the chips fall as they might you know if you're able to buy it and make a profit they don't care so there's kind of a two-fold side of that um but it, it does happen they do liquidate and sell this stuff and there is some profit to be made but just do all your homework do all your research make sure you're doing worst case scenario make sure you're calculating how much time it's going to take you to process you know if you're buying a, a pallet full of cure eggs that close out how long is it going to take you to test a Keurig and make sure it's working fully? Is it going to take you 10, 15 minutes times 100 of them? You know, how much time is that? How many hours? And uh, just something to keep in mind. Since a lot of you guys ask about it and a lot of you guys are interested in bulk purchasing, um, you know, just be very careful and make sure you do your due diligence and your homework and you should be okay. Um, and if you do buy one or you bought some in the past and you had some experience, please leave it down in the comments section. Let me know your experience or if you're looking at buying some or if you had, you know, some good experience, some bad experience, whatever it is. Um, definitely want to hear about that. So appreciate you guys watching this. Thanks so much. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time, later tonight, possibly. I might go live tonight. I haven't decided yet. We'll see, but maybe. Have a great Monday, guys. See ya.